Hello, and welcome to my first video on removable partial dentures. Um, today we'll be going over the introduction to RPDs. So what is an RPD? Uh, it stands for removable partial dentures, or sometimes also called partials. So it's a prosthesis that replaces some missing teeth that can be taken in and out of the mouth of the patient's well. They come in many different shapes and sizes, and hopefully by the end of this lecture, you'll get to know these components. So let's take off that RPD off of the cast. You'll see here that we've got these um, little edentulous areas that we have highlighted in blue. Uh, we call this in partials the edentulous span, sometimes also called the saddle. And then we see those teeth that are circled in orange. These ones are called the abutment teeth. Much like abutments of fixed partial dentures, the abutments of removable partial dentures also support that prosthetic and also retain it in the mouth. Um, these teeth are usually the ones that are right next to the dentulous areas, but also abutment teeth can be the ones that are on the corners of the mouth. So. You look at the partial denture itself and you'll see that it's got these artificial teeth. These teeth are made out of cross-linked polymers, this very tough plastic, and it is bonded to another type of plastic that is pink. That one is PMMA. Uh, you might know PMMA for making temporary crowns. Uh, it is the same material, but instead of curing with the factor of time, this is heat cured PMMA, which means it needs external heat to cure. So you can see here that heat cured PMMA, that is pink in color, is attached to the cross linked teeth. And they're both plastic, so they bond to each other. But how are they holding on to the metal? Well, that is the metal here. That is made out of chromium cobalt, most likely. Um, there are some other materials that it can be made out of, like nickel chromium. However, nickel can cause allergy to some people with nickel allergies. It used to be done with gold back when gold was expensive. Titanium and milled resins are also options that it can be milled out of, but they're still experimental, not quite mainstream yet. So back to our initial question, how is that acrylic holding on to the metal? Well, let's see. You can see here that under that acrylic is another layer of metal. This is what we call the acrylic resin retention elements. And it comes in two shapes, either a mesh or a lattice. The mesh is, well, just like as the name suggests, a mesh, like a meshwork of metal with little holes. And the acrylic resin would go through those holes and once it's cured, it'll stay in. The lattice, on the other hand, has these little struts or little metal round processes. And what happens is the acrylic goes around that as well. And once it cures, it also is hard to remove. Now, right at where the acrylic meets the metal, we've got what we call a finish line. You can see here that is the external acrylic resin finish line. It's external because there's an internal one on the inside, and that's where the internal side of the acrylic meets the internal side of the metal. So we've got two finish lines, external one and an internal one. All right, let's move on. These little nub-like structures are what we call rusts, and what the do is they support the RPD. The rests are fitted into what we call a rest seat. So this here is a little indent in the tooth. And that rest ultimately fits into that rest seat. When it fits in there, it directs forces along the long axis of that tooth and transmits all the forces coming from the partial to the tooth. Now, that brings us to the 
topic of support. Because we can have so many different combinations of missing teeth, we also have combinations of support of the partials. For example, in this top RPD here, we've got missing spaces that are bounded by teeth on either side. So this space here has two teeth on either side, and this space also has two teeth on either side. Each tooth has a rest, and any forces that go onto these teeth are going to transmit those forces onto the abutment teeth. So this is what we call totally tooth supported. All the forces that ultimately land on these artificial teeth get transmitted through the rests to these natural teeth. So this is all tooth supported. And then we have this one here where we've got an edentulous space that has no tooth back here. So essentially it's a what we call a free end saddle or an unbound edentulous space where it's not bounded by a tooth on the back side here. In this case, there, yes, there is a rest here, there's a rest there, and there's a rest there, but when you put pressure back here, you're inevitably going to push that part down. And in doing so, you're going to be resting on the tissues. So, yes, there are rests here, and they are transmitting some of the force, but the tissues are also sharing the load. So this is what we call a tooth tissue supported RPD. Lastly, we have an entirely soft tissue supported RPD, and really that is just the temporary partials. And these are all acrylic, they don't have any rests as you see here. And um, whenever a patient bites down, well, it just rests on the tissue. So that's what we call it a tissue supported RPD. All right, now moving on to these little processes over here. Um, these are what we call retentive clasps, and that prevents the RPD from falling out, much like this guy right here who does not have good clasps. This is what we call retention. So how that works is there's a little bit of an undercut right here. That's beneath the height of the contour of the tooth. And this here is your retentive clasp. When you put them together, that clasp engages right under the height of contour. So essentially, as the patient puts the partial in, that retentive arm flexes and goes into that retentive undercut. And while it is there, it is harder to remove. It needs to flex again to come out. And by doing so, it stays in unless intentionally pushed out of its place. And that's what we call retention and it's provided for by those retentive clasps engaging retentive undercuts. All right, now as that retentive arm goes up and down on that surface that has the retentive undercut, it puts some pressure on the tooth. That pressure needs to be what we call reciprocated. So that means is as that retentive arm goes above the height of contour, it is equally met by an opposing force, and that keeps the tooth from moving backwards, just much like an orthodontic appliance. I like to think of it as a beam struggle, if you've ever seen that. Um, two uh, Godzillas here battling it out, and the force is kind of meeting halfway. So any rigid piece of metal can provide reciprocation. Essentially, a thick clasp arm or a thick piece of metal that is rigid and non-flexible can provide reciprocation. All right, next, major connectors and minor connectors. That blue area here is what we call a major connector. It is a wide area of metal that connects everything together. It's essentially the biggest component of the RPD, usually spanning both sides of it. Then we've got these little small processes coming out of that major connector that I highlighted in orange here. 
These are what we call the minor connectors. And they'll connect things like rests, clasps, and so forth to the major connector. I've got one more area to talk about. That's this area right here, or maybe that area right here, that little piece of metal. That is what we call the guide plate. That guide plate essentially guides the partial when it's seated, and it's fitted right against the prepared area on the tooth called a guide plane. So this is an area that you actually prepare with your burr, much like the rest seat, and that guide plate rests against the guide plane. So they come together, kind of like that. So the theory here is as you're seating your partial, that guide plate is guided by the guide plane and seats the partial along a proposed path of insertion. Well, that brings us to the end of the lecture. So thank you for joining me and uh, join me next time when we'll talk about the Kennedy classification. But bye for now.